Welcome fellow travelers, your traveling buddy here, coming to you today from Mears, Michigan. And today I figured I'd take you around Silver Lake and show you all around the attractions that you can do around there, show you a little history of my family that's been up there, and all kinds of stuff up there, show you how beautiful this lake is, you know, so travel with me, will you? Alright travelers, as I'm coming up here down Mears Road here as you come up here as I'm heading toward where the dunes are and if you look up here on this strip as you come along here I don't know if you can see at the top of the top of these trees right about here and right about there you can see the, the top of the dunes just kind of peeking up from behind those trees this is the first sign that you're right there But we're going to get closer, trust me. We're going to get closer. Okay, here we have the road signs here. It tells you actually where, you know, places to go. You know, several like the dune access is this way. Yeah. Campgrounds, dune scooter rides, lighthouse, and they got signs up here. Shows you all the kind of attractions they have up here. And like I said, Mackwood Dune Rides. And that one's, that's one thing I'm planning on doing right there. Macwood Dune Rides is a, it's famous up here. They're actually in historical in, the, in historical uh, things in, in Michigan. They are well known. Uh, it's been up here for generations, pretty much. And they'll actually take you up into the sand dunes and take you for a ride in their little what they call dune scooters. And you can actually rent ATVs up here. And then you can rent Jeeps. And there's all kinds of uh, places that you can rent stuff to actually take you up in there. You can have boat rentals that can take you out on, you know, go out on the lake. So this is a very big tourist area. And this is the Mears. You see, Mears is one of these towns that's so small. If it wasn't for the sand dunes here, you'd probably pass through it and never knew you were even here. Here we have a sign here just before we get to the, uh, the main strip where the dunes, uh, well actually the dunes is over in another section but you see the lake first and then you see the dunes from right across the lake. It says welcome to S uh, Silver Lake Sand Dunes and I've already seen a bunch of buggies and 4x4s going by. I said this this takes me back to my childhood. This is this is where I spent most of my summers. Love it. Here we are in the main strip. We got hotels here. Lots of campgrounds. Well, let's check out this old car sitting near here. That's awesome. Here's where your Jeep and ATV rentals are. Come here. You can rent these. Take it out on the dunes. Now there's one important stop I have to do before I continue on show you people. Now you see this trailer right here? This trailer right here, that was our summer place. This was the place we spent all our summers up here. Fortunately we don't own it anymore. That was it right there. My dad built that pro barn back there. Yep. That was it. Man. And this tree actually, see these big tree right here? We planted that. Just a baby. It was just a baby back when it, and it kept growing. Yeah, we planted that tree. Yep. We spent many, many, many years up here. It was so sad when we had to get uh my dad decided to sell it. Yep, we put that porch up. Yep, it was beautiful. New message is yeah, this little horseshoe, this little horseshoe right here, 
uh, I've rode my bike up and down this thing many, many times. We had a little three-wheeler and stuff. We used to ride around this. This is a little association up here. Yep. When we actually, as I said, we put that trailer in there many years ago. I'm actually trying to find the picture of. I have the picture somewhere of when we first put that trailer in there. And we spent many, many years up there. Now there's something I wanted to show. So now, the original gas station isn't here anymore. Because right over there is where our trailer was. And there used to be a gas station right here that this guy ran and he had a deal with DNR every year to uh, you know mother coon or something got ran over and babies you know were left without a mother so he would take them in and he had a cage sitting right next to his gas station he used to sit right on this spot and he had this one raccoon one year and his name was Spanky and I got to be good friends with Spanky. Now across the street here, you can't see it past that building there, there is a pond. And I used to go out there and go fishing. And you know, I'm not a fish eater, but I would catch a little small fish or something and bring it over to Spanky, feed it to him. You know, Spanky got to know me. Well, the gas station attendant, he said one day, he said, he didn't get a chance to take Spanky out too much to teach him how to hunt because that's what he had to do. He had to teach him how to hunt. Eventually he had to turn him loose. And so he taught me how to go out and get Spanky. Spanky would come out and you know, open up the door. Spanky would come out and crawl up my leg, crawl, and perch up on my shoulder. And then he, I would walk across to that pond over here. And as soon as I got there, he'd climb down, go over there, catch frogs or whatever, eat it. And then when he was done, he'd come up, crawl back up on my shoulder, like, he's, you know, he'd be like, ah, I'm ready to go. And he'd come back to his thing. But eventually, you know, he had to set him loose. And I never, I saw a spank again. Maybe. And one day, I was in the pro barn over there, working on a bicycle. And next thing you know, this big old coon comes wandering in the pole barn. Sat there not too far from me. I didn't make any sudden movements. And he came, you know, just sit there, cleaning himself. And I was like, I wonder if that could be Spanky. And eventually he just kind of wandered off. I didn't try to pet him or anything, but I think it was Spanky coming to say hi to me. That, that that was a very touching thing. I always like raccoons after that. I see this little shop here. Now this is a shop. This is a shop definitely from my childhood. I actually knew the people that ran it, and it wasn't that big when I was a kid. Their son, after they passed away, took it over and expanded it. Expanded it. You see that little triangle spot there, right there. That was the actual building. That used to sit there and it used to have penny candy in there and th there was some they were a nice family they used to actually sometimes give us some free candy and i don't know if it's abandoned now it doesn't look like it's open anymore but yep it was always it was called jets landing matter of fact i don't even see a sign up there anymore so yeah i don't think that's open anymore Old Jets Landing. Here we have one of the most famous campgrounds here. It's called Jellystone Park. There he is, old Yogi Bear. Hey, boo boo. He's getting some picnic baskets. And I actually hang, used to hang out in this. We used to meet kids that come up here, camp up here, and all that. I'd meet them. I actually got to know some of the guys, those Rangers, that used to work up here. And one time they actually needed somebody to play boo-boo one time one morning when he was walking around the park and they asked me to do it. 
I was glad to do it. It was fun. But yeah, Jellystone Park. There he is, old Doogie. Here's a closer view of old Yogi here. He looks like he needs some a little touching up. Looks like his handle from his picnic basket is missing. But yeah, you can get up here, get your picture taken, you know, have your kids get in there, get your picture taken. Looks like Yogi's taking you away. Here, so welcome to Jellystone Park at Silver Lake Sand Dunes, Silver Lake, Michigan. Oh, Yogi. Right here they have this little strip mall here uh when i when i grew up here there was no strip mall here this was just a big old field here got a pond there across there and but there used to be a store right there called dockside where we used to, us kids used to go and uh but then uh this family up here that owns a lot of this stuff up here bought bought it out and they opened up this little strip mall here now here is one of our most famous uh, arcade places up here, a place to go ride go-karts and all that is a little place called Craig's Cruisers. Now for most of the people in Michigan, they know about Craig's Cruisers. It's Craig's, you know, but this is the first one. This is the one that started. I actually knew the guy, Craig, that started Craig's Cruisers. He wasn't a very nice guy, but his dad was great. I got to know his dad, Ron, very well. I used to hang out in this arcade a lot. And, you know, his dad, he, he invited me around. He's, he actually took me on free go-kart rides once in a while because he saw me going around. He actually gave me a part-time job one time, you know, under the table. And I'd come out once a week or so and Dude, weed whacker around the go kart go kart track. His son, he didn't like me hanging around too much. Like I said he wasn't a very nice guy, but Ron, he was a great guy. Now you just got one of the workers that was used to be here. His name was Pearl. Yes, his name was Pearl. It was a guy named Pearl, and he was a great guy. And before this was Craig's Cruisers. This was a place called Bill Lavender's Dune Rides, right on the site. Now, this was like another version of like Mac Woods, but this one didn't make it. And there he is, Bill Lavender. Lathers. Yep. He he had one here. He used to take you up in the sand dunes. So here's was like some of his dune scooters. Now, believe it or not, my dad actually used to have one of these dune scooters. After they decided to get rid of them, my dad bought one, fixed it up. And we used to tramps around in this lake for years. I always wonder whatever happened to that dune scooter. Somebody told me it got wrecked. Sitting in a junkyard. And I hope that it's not true. But yeah, old Bill Lathers. They, they actually put a historical marker up here for him. Because they said he was one of the, he was just like Mac Woods. He was one of the first. He was one of the guys that took advantage of making a living out of those dunes. He was born in 1925, and he died in 2005. I actually met him once. Rest in peace, Bill. Rest in peace. Now this is something here that I'm so glad that he kept. This old wishing well. This thing's been here since I was wee little. Actually before it was the Craig's Cruises, it was the Bill Lathers Dune Rides. Right here. And we should come up here. Yep. It's basically a lot of little water fountain. You can come up here and get a drink if you want. See? People, we're not afraid of, we weren't afraid of, you know, water, you know, regular water. We just get a drink out of that. 
Give me these bottled water. We got water right here. Yep. The old wishing well. I'm glad it's still here. Now that was just great as I was coming out of the Craig's Cruisers here. I noticed a guy saying in there, and believe it or not, the guy I was just telling you about, Pearl, he still works here. He's a great guy. He was telling me Ron, unfortunately, died about three years ago. That's sad. He was a great guy, like I said. He, his son, he didn't like me very much, but Ron, he liked me. Like I said, he gave me a part-time job here to clean up, uh, clean up around the thing, you know, a little bit, and do some weed whacking you know he gave me a little spending money and then as I'm walking you know I sometimes I bring my own money up here waste all my money or whatever like that he see me hanging around he goes hey buddy how's it going you need, you need some quarters to play some games and you know I didn't expect them to do it but he would reach right into the register and give me some quarters but he was he was a great guy so rest in peace Ron Rest in peace. You're definitely missed. Well, this is definitely different. See, this was an old arcade that was up here. They had a go-kart track right there. It looks like they're changing it. It's going to be a miniature golf course now. Now, you see the swimming pool up that's up here. Now, that was our, our association swimming pool, which I never understood. I never tried to get up there because we had the lake right up the road. Why would you go to a swimming pool? when you had the lake up the road. Now you see that restaurant right there called Sands Restaurant. That was my first official job right there. I used to be a bus boy inside that restaurant. Yep, I bus tables all summer. It was hard work. Definitely different than what I remember. I turned this, this used to be an old campground that was kind of rough around here but and they closed it down many years ago but they, they turned this into a park now where they have concerts huh. that's that's pretty cool they have concerts out here maybe some festivals yeah this used to be an old campground it was probably a ro rowdy campground and eventually got shut down but it was too rowdy. See now up here we have our Silver Lake State Park where you can go camp you can camp here and I have a actually have a swimming swimming area there. You can go out there swimming on swim, uh, Silver Lake. Yep, Silver Lake State Park right there. See right here folks, this is Macwood Dune Rides. You see, see how those trucks look? They actually custom make those. And I said, this company's been here for a, a long time. They used to have, I think it was back in the 30s or 40s, they used to do this. You know, they used to have some kind of vehicle. They used to take up people up in the dunes. Yep, that's back with Dune Rising. We're going to do that this week. Now, right here, we have right next to Mac Woods is the place, place called Whippy Dip. And they serve the best ice cream around here. Uh, they serve a pizza that was awesome. That was awesome pizza. And believe it or not, they actually have a. They used to have a picture of George Went, the guy that played Norm from Cheers. Uh, used to have it sitting in his window because he actually visited this place. And uh, they had a sign that said, "Where does Norm go, go to get his pizza? Whippy Dip. That's where." See up here. At the end of this road here, this, is this road here, you take this road all the way back. This is where Dune, uh, Mac Woods, they take their scooters. And they go, as a matter of fact, here's some coming right now. Look at that. It's here. They come along. They, there's Mac Wood Dune Rides. And this guy, he's about ready to take them up in the dunes. And this old bridge is called Termite Bridge. But then down this road here is the lighthouse that goes right onto Lake Michigan. But we'll do that another day. All right, folks, there she is. The old sand dunes, Silver Lake and the Silver Lake sand dunes.
right ahead of us. See all these people are heading for the dunes. There's this truck in front of me. He's got a bug, you know, flag on the front. We Yep, there she is, folks. That's Silver Lake right there. And you can't miss them dunes. Well, there she is, fellow travelers. Silver Lake Sand Dunes in all its glory. In front of this lake, which is Silver Lake. And you see, I told you before. See right here, this area here, the only vehicles can go over there is uh, the Mackwood Dune Rides over there. And over this way, if you look there, see if I can't zoom in on it, this is where the off-road vehicles can go. And you can see some of them actually riding out on the hills over there. Right there. Kind of hard to see, I'm off in the distance. But yeah, there's some buggies and trucks and all that climbing the hills over that way. And that's the only place they can go over there. And they say, you see this lake, you know what I'm saying? You see right there too. There's people actually ride, go across this lake uh, with their boats, park alongside the dunes, and go swimming up there. You know, running up and down the hills, have a great time. There's lots of stuff to do out here. I mean, you don't have to have a buggy and you know, all that, enjoy the dunes. You can, people out there paddle boating, or what do you call those things? Like a surfboard, and boats, a sailboat. There's a sailboat out there. It's a great lake. I used to have a paddle boat, I used to try to troll around this lake for hours and go fishing stop over here go swimming go up on the dunes there's just some more boats going out now one other history thing that I remember up here and I actually was up here when they started that now, if you remember Desert, uh, Operation Desert Storm back in the 90s, they, uh, you know, they were going to go over to Iraq and fight in that war over there. Now, believe it or not, the military actually brought their soldiers here and actually was able to go over on that side and learn how to survive in the desert because a lot of them didn't know it was never in the desert before and this was the closest they had for a desert around here in Michigan so they brought them here and taught them and then, they, then off to the war they went I'll never forget that because I said you saw all these hum, hummers and military vehicles coming here and we thought we were being invaded until we found out that's what it was. They were training to go over into Operation Desert Storm. Okay, here, see this channel here? I used to bring my paddle boat down through here all the time. Go fishing. This goes all the way back to the section here. Yeah, he's traveling down there, catch perch right here. Sometimes fish right off this thing. There's some geese out there. And I used to sometimes even park my boat out here. But eventually we had our association there. We had a uh, little dock over by where our cabin was. I used to park it there. But at one time I used to park it out here. I have a picture of my paddle boat. I used to sit right out here.
Now right here folks is a, this little dead end road right here. And basically uh, that's where you, the pedestrians it can go in for the dune access over there. There's a little area right over here where you go in. The buggies and that are a different section. But right here you can go up here, you can actually walk up here and go right up inside the dunes. Right up there. I don't remember as a kid, we actually came up here during the winter time one time. And this hill right here, we slid, we went sliding on it. But they usually don't let you go up in the dunes during the winter time. You know, it's too dangerous. But yeah. Isn't that beautiful? You can walk right up in there and go check you right over the lake. Uh, Silver Lake is right over here. I'm not going to go up there today. I got that planned for another day. But we will get up there. If you see this house right here, now, this house has been here for a long time and they've been battling the dunes themselves for years. Because the dunes get slowly but slowly closer. To their property and actually there used to be long long time ago there used to be a lot of houses along the actual lake right up here but unfortunately the dunes came and buried it over right there see this garage is right up next to the dunes they said they have to do something every year to keep the sand from taking away isn't that beautiful though that is a beautiful house, like a little light, lighthouse. But yeah, the dunes slowly but surely gets closer and closer to this building every year. Like I was telling you before, right here is where, you know, pedestrians and stuff like that, you know, people that don't have 4x4s, and you know, they can come in here and state park and go up in there. And you can actually, they got trails up there they'll take you and you can walk up there right into the sand dunes so I mean you don't have to have a buggy to enjoy the dunes even though buggy makes it more fun here we have this little outside where the dune dune buggies go in and all this place called dune land off-road center now I knew the guy that originally built this place this place has been up here since I was wee little I mean and the original guy he died a long time ago but now somebody else owns it but it's still called dune land and this is where you can come up here if you need parts for your buggies while you're up here they got souvenirs in there yep dune land see here's where all the buggies and stuff and they come in there this is where they go in now they've changed it many times uh, so much since I was kids, look at that buggy there. Oops. Look at that old speed buggy type buggy. Oh, yeah, people on my, trying to film while people are out riding around. But this road here, they have an actual, uh, their own little path there. And, you know, before, now you have to get a uh, voucher to get in the dunes. Uh, you know, because so many people want to come up here. Now, believe it or not, this road here, this little, if you see this third little path here, that's for the buggies. That's it. Because believe it or not, I have seen it where the buggies would be all the way down. I mean, these people would be lined up to get into the dunes for hours. I mean, you think it was a rock concert or something. And then this, it would be right along this path. I actually have a picture somewhere. I'm going to have to dig that up and show you the picture I've got of all these vehicles up here. And I believe it was on a 4th of July weekend. You know, and I, they would go all the way down this hill, this road. See, now here's this where you get your vouchers. Right there. They actually got a little station for you to get your vouchers. But yeah, this road, they used to come all the way down this road and around this corner. And I mean, I've, they used to go almost for miles for people just waiting to get into the dunes.
right here. See, you know, they would turn this corner, and they would still be lined right up along this road right here. And they went almost completely down. It was crazy. Just to get inside the dunes to go play around. Oh, here comes some buggies and stuff like that, or some 4x4s. Four Look at that. And you see how they got that flag on the front? They started that years ago. Before, you didn't have to have it on the front. You could have it anywhere. But there was some people who got into some accidents. And so they made regulations that the flag had to be up front so you can see. And then they actually put, you know, where you can go certain ways. And this way you can see their flag as you're going up over the hill. See, as you drive down through here, you know that you're in the dune area because everywhere you look, there's 4 by 4s dune buggies, you know, parked alongside the road, campsites. See right here, look at Look at this big 4x4 four four right here, that's sweet. Old Suburban. Look at that, that's sweet. And they got some of the newer style, you know, those little ATV type buggies. Now this is something here is I have to show you. So this is Upper Silver Lake here. See that's Upper Silver Lake. This was actually a man-made lake that somebody made a long time ago. I think it was because of the dam that was being put in here. Um, yeah, this is Upper Silver Lake. Now we're up here. Now if you look up front, front there, you see where those stop signs are? They actually had to put them stop signs there because I tell you. If you went flying, cruising through here, because there's actually a boat launch right there. You see, there's a guy putting a boat in right now. And if you didn't know it, that boat launch would, I mean, you would go flying down that boat launch. They actually had to put these stop signs here, because people would actually did. They would don't pay attention, and then boom, next thing you know, you're going, boom, boom. <laughs> right through that boat launch. It scared me, me many times. Now, I used to trips along this road here many times when I was a kid and believe it or not I didn't get an allowance when I was growing up my dad always told me you have a bike and people around here you know we get some people from Ohio the state and Ohio and all that and they don't realize that Michigan has a bottle deposit you know you get 10 cents for each can a bottle so I used to ride my bike up along here I actually go up to the dunes and all that and pick up cans of bottles. And that's where I got my money, my spending money for the whole summer. And every morning, every morning, afternoon, I would come traps out, find cans and bottles, turn them in, and then go play at the arcade, we'll do whatever. About it for this trip around the Silver Lake. I hope you you enjoyed it as much as I did. You know, I hope I was able to show you how beautiful this lake is. You know, all the stuff that you can do. But stay tuned. There's going to be more. I mean, I'm going to get deep into it. I'm going to go right on Macwood Dune Rides. Go to the lighthouse. And of course, we got the fireworks on Fourth of July. So stay tuned. And if you like this, hit that like button. Share. Comment. You know, any comment is appreciated. And, you know, if you have any ideas for me to do, let me know. I might just show up and do it. So until next time, travelers, I'll see you around the mitten.